Hi, this is Dina Tollefson and welcome to my studio. I'm so glad to have you here today. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for joining and if you've been here before, welcome back. I hope if you haven't already, you'll ring that subscription bell so that you'll know if I'm going to be doing a live stream or we'll be uploading a new video. I do live streams twice a week um, on Tuesdays and Fridays. Um, at 10 o'clock Central Time, which is, uh, let's see, that is 3 o'clock uh, GMT. So this is the Green Gold Challenge, and I hope that you're participating in the Green Gold. I've got my Green Gold right here, and this painting is going to be a Luna Moth. I'll be using paint brushes. I've got some flats and some uh, chisel blenders and, uh, and a liner brush to sign my name. And this is all acrylic paint. So I've mixed up a little titanium white and some green gold. And now we'll put this over onto the canvas. So the green gold challenge is a fun little challenge that I um, created. And uh, all the people who are participating, and anybody can participate, you just put the words green gold challenge into your title and upload your video onto your, um, onto your channel. And then all of the videos that I can find that have the hashtag Green Gold Challenge or have the words Green Gold Challenge in the title are going to go into a big playlist. And um, if you'd like more information about how to participate, I have a short two minute video on my channel that gives all the details of how to do this. And uh, for this video here, I'm going to, this is my entry for the challenge. And I thought it would be really fun to paint the Luna Moth. And I've got uh, just a pencil, just did a little graphite sketch of one Luna Moth that's in full flight and another little guy off to the side here who's just kind of twisting and gliding. And that's something that's very characteristic of the Luna Moth. They're only found in North America. And when they fly, they have these kind of streamers that you see at the bottom, these long twisting streamers. And when they are flying, they will twist their body and twist these streamers so that they can confuse their um, main, uh, the main predator, who is a bat. So bats love to eat luna moths. Apparently they're very tasty to them. And so the luna moth has got some, these little streamers that it uses to confuse the bat so it isn't quite sure which way it's flying. And then the Luna Moth also has these kind of neat, uh, there are two sets of almost like a fake eye or something, like a little eye-shaped pattern. And the Luna Moth is also known as the American Moon Moth. So I thought it would be great to put a moon in my painting, uh, just compositionally and then also to kind of represent uh, the name of the, of the Luna Moth. And Luna referring, of course, to the word moon or lunar. And I'm just putting a little titanium white on that to uh, get the moon started. So here's a little phthalo blue red shade. And I thought I could get the, uh, get the sky started with that. Just a flat uh, American Painter brush. And we'll just start to block in the dark, inky sky. So Luna Moths, you really only see them active at night. They're nocturnal. And the adult, the adult uh, never eats. Once it's an adult, it comes out of its cocoon. So uh, uh, butterflies have chrysalises and moths have a cocoon. So this little cocoon, they uh, when they're little caterpillars, they like to eat um, uh, leaves from the birch trees and from walnut trees, some other different trees and bushes, and they, um, they'll uh, go into their cocoon, and then when they come out, they only live for one week, and they don't eat the whole time that they're a, uh, a moth in, in its adult form. They are just uh, looking to find other moths to mate with and to continue the life cycle. And the body of the moth is a kind of a white, fuzzy, furry kind of a thing. And then they have these wonderful um, 
kind of just bright, light, limey, gold green, green gold kind of wings. I think they're just really beautiful. They're also very large. They're, they can be up to four and a half inches across, which is pretty big for a moth. So just using the brush to take that color and just get it right up along the edge. There we go. And I want the moth, the smaller moth, that um, I want it to appear in the distance more so and then have the focal point be more the larger moth. And I want this smaller moth, I'm going to paint him with some softer edges to make him feel like he's receding. And I'm also going to be thinking about the moon and painting that with a soft edge so that it also feels it's like it's more in the distance. Now this color that you see that's been painted over the entire canvas is yellow ochre. And I tone all of my canvases, uh, well, maybe not 100%, the majority of my canvases, I begin with a wash of yellow ochre. If for some reason I have a canvas, I need to have a white background or something like that, but that's pretty unusual for me. It's almost always this warm yellow ochre. And what that does is that gets rid of the white and little bits of the yellow ochre will peek through. I'm just using a filbert brush, so that's a, um, a filbert has a soft rounded edge on it. It's got the roundness of a round brush, but it's a flat, if you view it from the side, it's flat. And I'm just making these nice soft edges here for our Luna Moth that's off a little distance. Just nice and easy, kind of, I'm letting little bits of the underpainting show through. And I'm working to get just really gestural marks. I want this to not have, I want it to feel loose and gestural. So just letting the paint do its thing. Come up right here on the top, the top of the Luna Moth, or the top uh, wing, there's this uh, really kind of wonderful burgundy color that we'll be adding in a little while. Now as I'm working around the moon, I'm letting bits of the white show through and later we'll come back with some brighter colors to get the feeling that the moon is reflecting light from the sun and is giving a, acting as a light source in the night sky. Just kind of teasing that blue up along the edges of the moon. Get a little more blue there, there we go. I'm gonna darken that up, it's filling a little on the green side with a little too much of the yellow ochres peeking through. There we go. Well, and I hope that you all got a chance to participate in green gold challenge and green gold is kind of a tricky color to use and but yet it's such a fun and neat color so I'm really looking forward to seeing all the different ways that all of the fellow YouTuber artists are coming up with. I know there's going to be some performance art, there's going to be paintings and colored pencil drawings, and um, even someone's going to be doing makeup. So it should be a neat, neat thing to see all the different ways that the color can be used. So I'm just scrubbing in a little bit. I um, used a color that I made with yellow ochre and black and white to have in the moon a little bit of detail. Let's go in now with a little bit of this permanent alizarin crimson and start to indicate that this top ridge on the top of the body of the insect 
got this really nice contrast between the green and then this strong bold color at the top. Now I've got a little liner brush and a liner brush is really just a round brush with long bristles that is um, intended for detail work or I typically use it when I sign my name. And these little eye patterns, both at the top of the body and the bottom set of wings. Um, I think wonder if this is maybe God made camouflage to spare that poor little Luna moth so it can get away from from its predators. But the bats have to eat something, so maybe when the Luna moth is tired and he's had the end of his time, then maybe the Luna, maybe the bat can have him as a snack. But it's kind of sad to think about that poor Luna moth falling prey to the bat, the myotis. So I'm now taking a, what is this? This is dioxazine purple. And the top of the eye marks have almost like eyeliner or something. It's like a darker uh, bit and the centers have white. So we'll put a little bit of this light color in the middle and then I'll need to blend these colors. So there are different ways you can blend. Of course, you can blend by mechanically scrubbing um, a color to either remove some of it or scrub it in. And another way to blend would be to add another color on top. So I'm gonna do kind of a hybrid between the two. I'm gonna do a little mechanical movement here of the color around and then add another color just to kind of soften that up. So they're really different, uh, different ways to make green gold. I've got green gold right out of the tube. And I'm also mixing a green gold by taking yellow and a very tiny, tiny amount of black that can make kind of a wonderful version. Just a little bit of white here on the body, this nice little fluffy body. And then the gray that you see, I just mix the gray using a little bit of uh, Mars Black and some white and a tiny amount of yellow ochre to show the, um, the abdomen or the bottom of the, the bottom, I guess it's the abdomen, it's the bottom part of the, of the uh, torso of the insect. I guess I don't know what the bottom little part is. It's little, his little bottom, but his little bottom kind of curves in um, in and down as he's flying. So now I've got just a yellow and I'm gonna just take yellow and restate some of these brighter areas on the insect over the initial um, thinly painted yellow ochre that, or not yellow ochre, that thinly painted uh, green gold. Just coming back with a little bit of yellow to brighten some of these areas. And now a little bit of shadow. So there's the top set of wings and the bottom set and there's a bit of a gap between the two and I want to play that up by, um, all I did was just use a darker version. So that could be green gold with a little just a touch of black or a um, person could use um, yellow and then, um, and then black as a mixture. Now I'll go in and soften this edge by just taking a clean brush that was uh, dipped into water, clean it off, and then I can kind of clean up the edge by just scrubbing it out a little bit. Now if I got some paint where I didn't want it, I can always paint over the top. So I have a little, I can see a little spot there on his body, the white body, I'll go back and add a little add a little touch of white to cover that. But I want to get the, um, those of the moth has got kind of fluffy, furry, um, the, the wings themselves are kind of soft and fluffy and furry. So I want to kind of get that feeling. And then the body of the moth is very fluffy and furry. 
I want to get that feeling across through the paint. And then uh, one thing that's really characteristic between a moth and a butterfly is a butterfly has antennae that are like a little stick with a little thing at the end, a little bulb at the end. And you can always tell a moth from a butterfly because a moth will have kind of a feathery looking, um, the antenna will look very feathery. And, uh, and so that's, that's a big, uh, big way to just tell them if you just come across one and look at it, then you can tell that way, butterfly versus moth. So I've got, I used to used a liner brush to create that little feathery kind of effect. I first put down a layer of yellow, uh, not yellow, I guess it was a cat orange medium or cat orange hue, and then came over the top with a little bit more white plus the cat orange. Let's take a little titanium white and our thalo blue red shade and get that mixed up. So the sky is very dark um, through most of the painting and I like that contrast between the dark inky sky and then the moon, but I'm wanting to create a transitional area between this inky darkness and show the effect of the moon and how the moon is interacting with the insects and the insects are drawn to the moon. So I want to put special attention on that. Here's a nice, clean, dry, round brush. And I'm taking a tiny amount. I'm going to do a dry brushing technique here. Just taking a very tiny so this technique is called scumbling or dry brushing. And when I'm doing this, I'm just uh, putting a very small amount of paint on the dry brush so the brush is not wet at all first. And then I can put this paint, just kind of really um, brush it over the top and I can either put it in and scrub it in or just lightly apply it. Here I'm going to actually scrub it in. And I'm being careful to not put too much paint on the brush. For those of you who have ever done stenciling, you know the effect of that you'll take a soft brush and put a very small amount on it, putting quite a bit more than what a person would use for stenciling. But it's the same kind of idea where you you pounce it pounce the paint on. And then here working out, I'm putting the phthalo blue red shade that we mixed up just now and uh, putting that on. So first we have a teal and then working outward from the moon. Now the phthalo blue red shade plus white. So I want to get this feeling of the teal is a warmer and lighter color. And then working out and giving the feeling like the moon is brightening and lightening the sky. If I get a little bit of the color up onto the insect, that's okay. I can just, you know, put a little color over the top of that later. I'm really more interested in getting, getting good coverage. And I want some of the dark color to peek through too. So there's kind of an effect you can get with scumbling this dry brushing that's different than if the, if the brush were originally wet. A wet brush that I dipped into the paint is going to give a whole different mark than a totally dry brush with a spare amount of paint. All right, so now another clean brush, tiny, tiny amount of the, of the teal. I can go back in and layer this. Now that it's dry, go back and layer that over in another layer. Kind of reinforce that teal color. And really give a soft, soft edge to the moon. I'll be going back over with some titanium white in the other direction. There we go. And just making that super soft. So in my painting, I'm, I'm imagining that these two Luna moths are going to have their love reunion or their love union 
up in the sky and they'll be able to create more Luna Moths and that both of them will evade the bat. Or if they're going to be a meal for the bat, maybe it's right on their last day since they get about a week to live. Maybe on the last day, then the moth will have a meal, but hopefully not too soon. So I'm just going back over and restating some of these areas with the permanent alizarin crimson. And now signing my name using CAD Orange Hue, a mute liner brush. And I want to thank everyone for joining, and I hope that you've had a fun time doing the Green Gold Challenge and that you'll make a version for yourself and become part of this playlist. And I hope to do it again. This is 2019. I hope to do it again in 2020. So, uh, so everyone is welcome, and, and, uh, and I hope that you'll participate. So here's my finished painting, and thank you so much for joining. This is Dina Tollefson. Bye-bye.